Um, is a muscles different or is it different or is it the same to cultivate a terrorist asset versus maybe an organized crime mafia? Asset? Um, I, that's a great question. I think it's really at the root of it. It's the same at the root of it. It comes down to kind of being able to, you know, um, just relate in some form or fashion. Obviously, obviously the, the, the organized crime guy, it's going to be about family. It's going to be about respect. It's going to be about um, nurturing that belief that they are doing something for others, right? Ultimately, though, all those guys, it's self-serving. Exactly. Every one of them, yeah. every single one. Of them. And they'll tell you that, you know, they'll tell you that in the, in the long run. Finding some balance, you know, finding some leverage, whether it be through humor, something I could relate to. Um, same thing overseas. You know, it's the same kind of thing. Got to find that something that you can relate to, whether it be a story from my military time. Hey, you know, when I was when I was kind of here, I, I remember you guys struggled with this and, you know, different funds and not having. And they, and they want to hear that stuff. They want to hear what the infidels have to, to say. So one of the best things I have, this book right here, it's called Very Special Agents. It's, a, it's the story of the ATF. Okay. So I'll tell you a great story. I'm down in Quantico. And, and I had kind of a path to Quantico that was weird um, that, I, of course, I still can't talk about, but it had to do with kind of being a double dipping, being crossed over right. before I went into the actual bureau. So one of my instructors at Quantico, great dude, played played basketball at Iona College for Jim Valvano. Oh, that's awesome. And a real quick story about this guy. So he tells a story about Valvano gets to college. He's a young guy. They tell him, hey, you got to go down to Columbia Presbyterian Hospital for a fundraiser. So he goes in, he grabs his name tag. Jim, you know, Jim Valvano, I own a college. He walks up to the first person and the woman's like, hey, how are you? I'm Mary Jones. You know, I'm the CEO here at the hospital. Who are you? He goes, Jim Valvano, I own a college. She goes, wow, you look very young to own your own college. <laughs> well, it's a great story. And, and so my instructor at Quantico is the guy who played, right? So anyway, this guy tells, you know, basically, here's your assignment. I want you to learn about other federal agencies. I want you to go into the library, pull this book. This is the original book I pulled. Yeah, I should have stolen it from Quantico, but I did. And I'm, so I'm reading. I'm, and I'm reading through, and I'm like, oh, man, this is great. Start to read. I'm like, shit, this, is a, this sounds familiar. Well, I don't know if you guys can see it, but if you look at that bottom picture, bootlegger Angelo Slim Diorio. Oh, that's my God. God. That's my old book. Right. So that's my now I, I no no knowledge of that. So that's my dad's father's brother, youngest brother. So I call I call home and I'm like, hey, how you guys doing? Whatever. My mother and father. Oh, we're so we're so proud of, you know, so oh my God, this is so great. Hey, mom, dad, like what? Um, can you tell me anything about Uncle Angelo? And there's silence. Oh, no. So I'm like, yeah. So my, my mother goes, we didn't want to make you nervous. Oh, wow. I'm like, mom, I'm getting background checked. Like, yeah, but we know you know how to beat that stuff. <laughs> I'm like, I have a conspiracy going on on my home phone. So, of that course, I have a question about it. You know, it's yeah. like, what's the deal? And we used to go, we used to go from church, from Sacred Heart Church in Valesburg, Newark. Yeah. I was a young guy. My sister was 12 years older. My brother was 10 years older. We'd get in the car, go to the bagel place, grab bagels, and we'd go to this hall all the way downtown Newark. And my uncles would be there. I didn't know it at the time. Neither did my brother or sister. They were actually in jail. And we would cook Sunday dinner and have in the in the lobby of somehow they paid off the guards. And we would eat. They'd feed the guards or whatever. I love that, was my, those, that was my uncle. So long wow. story short is I kind of figured out how, the way I treated my uncles, the way I live with my cousins. Yeah. was the same way I kind of relate it to guys who are in the cert, you know, in the life. I mean, yeah. it's the same exact thing. I still, I, I get along. There's a couple guys locally that I see all the time. A couple guys that are really good golfers that yeah. I see, and we just have mutual respect for each yeah. other. And, hey, they're like, you know, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. You know, if you're going to be on your side, be on your side, I'll be on my side and let's respect each other. And I've always felt that's the key, you know? Well, it's funny. Cause um, I, I'm pretty friendly with Myron Sugarman. We call him the last Jewish gangster. And he knew my, Meyer Lansky, uh, I mean, Longy Maybe. Zwolman, you name it. Right. Yeah. So more than likely your uncle's era was probably Longy Zwolman. I would think uh, if he was out of Newark. So that's pretty interesting yep. history there. So this yep. is kind of the, the, <laughs> I have a million questions for you, but this is one question that I'm dying to hear. So yeah. I think you're like myself. Um, our nuclear family was legitimate 